Welcome to this video, the highlight of my day. And I hope to make it the highlight of your day. What can we speak about today? Well, my idea was to speak about the intersection of elder law, guardianship, and estate planning. You do three things, yes, and a few others in the office with the assistance of several paralegals, several associate attorneys, and myself, and a receptionist too, and an assistant of a whole team. You'd be amazed. What is estate planning? Well, the idea behind estate planning is these are going to be short, brief summaries so you see how they interact with each other and how we work in the office. Estate planning, in summary, is taking what you have acquired during your life and passing it on to the people that you love. Family, friends, church, synagogue, mosque, hospital. And then when does that happen? Well, it happens upon your passing. But if you use a certain type of strategy, perhaps a trust, you can plan also to give away things. You could always give away things during your life, right? Take your house and give it to your child. Does that make sense? Does it not make sense? We can discuss those things. Take money and gift it away. You can do that as part of a strategy. Might make sense. But then what would happen if you became incapacitated? Who's going to handle your, your affairs, your home, your business, your life, your accounts? Well, we put a plan into place. So that's the broad category of estate planning. If you fail to make a plan and there's an incapacity, some circumstance, a tragic event, and they're always tragic, a car accident, a stroke, another kind of injury, or the onset of one of the diseases of civilization of man, Alzheimer's or dementia. Well, if you have an incapacity, who can handle your affairs? Is that plan in place? And if there's no plan in place, then you need a guardianship. Guardianship is the court process where one adult person applies to be the guardian of another adult person. The statute is uh, is not specific to age. It skews older, right? Because more often than not, well, and it can affect young or old perhaps someone with a significant developmental disability, an adult person might want to become the guardian for their 19-year-old child. That child is now legally an adult. That's one area or one area of guardianship. And then the other, again, it skews older because of the onset of dementia or Alzheimer's or a condition like that, where perhaps one adult person is seeking to be the guardian of their adult parent, right? So a 50-year-old child seeking to be the guardian of their 75-year-old parent or a I've had people in their 60s looking to be the guardian of a parent in their 80s. About a 20 year difference. There are people that have had children younger than 20, typically 25, 30 years, and that trend is going old. So the general category was elder law. Those are issues that affect the elderly uh, and then guardianship and estate plan. Frank Bruno Law is where you can find all of the answers to many of your problems. What do we handle there? There is information on estate plan, elder law, guardianship, divorce, and real estate. Yes, so many things. And yet we have an emphasis on those areas of law. It's myself and an associate, several other attorneys, several paralegals, and we work together as a team. I'm the chief attorney on issues related to guardianship and estate planning and issues related to elder law, which is a broad spectrum of I don't know, interrelated laws. I also take on court appointments in surrogate's court. We probate and we do divorce and we handle real estate. Why do we do those things? Well, in life, I, I, I'm trying to do interrelated. They're interrelated. In estate planning, we take what you have while you're alive and we make a plan to pass it on to your loved ones, your spouse and children, your friends and family, your house of worship. And that involves the use of an estate plan. What is that? Well, it's a plan for your estate. It either could be a trust, it could be a will, it could be by specific designations on the various documents. And if we utilize a trust, they come in two flavors, irrevocable and revocable. There are special needs trusts, but that's not part of this conversation. So when we utilize a trust, we take the assets that you have, which oftentimes include real property, a house, uh, an apartment building, a commercial property, and we take the deed and we transfer it into the trust. That's why we do real estate. I represent trusts that sell property. 
I represent trusts that buy property. I represent persons that transfer property from their individual name into their trust. So it's sort of interrelated or at least uh, adjacent. Real property is estate planning adjacent. And then uh, because we handle litigation, we handle divorce and guardianship litigation. Right? You might say guardianship and divorce. Well, oftentimes they're the same population. Children that are fighting over their parent are the same people that as parents fight over their children. That's a conundrum. But it's families fighting over family members. Yes, it happens in family court, in Supreme Court, in divorce matters, in Supreme Court for guardianship cases, and in the surrogates court fighting over a loved one's money. It happens in all of those places and we follow the cases and we handle the cases across the several areas of practice and the several courts. So if you need us, we will be there. Check it out. FrankBrunoLaw.com. Thank you.